Hello, you beautiful people. You all look great, and we love that you're tuning into our favorite streaming channel, Today All Day. We are halfway through the week. Welcome to our digital show. It's called Today in 30. And we've got another packed half hour, so we should probably get started. Uh, yes, let's begin with the latest on the emergency evacuations in Afghanistan after President Biden stood by his August 31st withdrawal deadline. We'll have a full report. Plus, Renee Elise Goldsberry is here to talk two of our favorite things, Hamilton and Girls 5 Eva. You love saying that. Right? 5 Eva. Yeah. Uh, and if you're looking for some fitness tips, you've come to the right place. We're going to help you strengthen not just your physical health, but your mental health as well. So, ready to get going? Let's do it. It's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. Well, we'll start in Afghanistan. That is where we find NBC's chief foreign correspondent, Richard Ingle. Once again, Richard, good morning. Good morning. The race is now on to get people out of this country. The United States and other nations have already evacuated tens of thousands of Afghans, the equivalent of a small city. That itself is a massive logistical challenge. But now there's another problem, where to keep and house them all while their paperwork is verified and processed. The clock is running out on America's longest war. The Taliban stressing it's time for the U.S. to pack up and fly out. Now what may be the biggest airlift in American history is in full swing, finally working with spectacular efficiency. Transport planes and civilian aircraft brought in from around the world. The loading often done with care and compassion. But that doesn't always last once they land. There's a huge and ugly bottleneck at transit hubs. One of the main ones is at the U.S. base in Doha, Qatar. Thousands crowded in holding areas. Temperatures well over 100 degrees a day. Qatari officials tell NBC News they want to help, but the defense and state departments are blocking with cumbersome bureaucracy. So Afghans are stuck in a terrible limbo. And no one seems to know how long they'll be here. We are aware of what had been some uh, terrible sanitation conditions uh, at, at Qatar. Similar complaints about the Ramstein U.S. base in Germany. Sarah Fortin, the daughter of an Afghan translator, arrived in the U.S. after transiting through both of the American bases. It was kind of hard, especially when we were in Qatar because it was so hot there. I fainted four times in there and it was very scary. We, everyone thought they were going to die. Then in Germany, it was the exact opposite. It was very, very cold. People didn't have blankets. So yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. In Kabul, the Taliban are maintaining order and now discouraging, at times blocking, people from reaching the airport. Many Afghans were trying to leave even if they had no connection to the United States. Two days ago, the crowds at the airport looked like this. Now, just a fraction of that. The Taliban have set up checkpoints all across Kabul. They don't want a terrorist attack by ISIS, their enemy, or anyone else to slow down the evacuation and keep the Americans in their country even one day longer. Richard, one of the chief concerns uh, over the past few weeks as the, the Taliban cements their, their, their rule has been the future of women, the future of girls there. Are we starting to get any indication of what that's going to look like moving forward? Well, mostly we are hearing what the Taliban says it will do. The Taliban has said that girls can go to school, that they can work, that they are not going to reimpose the burqa. They say that they do expect some sort of Islamic head covering, a veil, which is common in, across the Middle East and in many Muslim countries. And I can tell you, just across the street from where I am, a few minutes ago, I saw uh, a group of women. They did not have burqas on. They were a few yards away from Taliban fighters. The Taliban fighters we're, we're not harassing them. But these are still very early days. We will see how this progresses in the weeks, months, potentially years to come. And it hasn't really been tested yet because right now, most of uh, many women in this country seem to be at home. You're not seeing many women on the streets. Richard Engelforce, once again on the ground in Kabul. Richard, thank you. All right, now to new developments in an infamous case in California that made headlines around the world. Yeah, Scott Peterson is serving life in prison for the 2002 murder of his pregnant wife, Lacey, and their unborn son. Today, Peterson has a new hearing where his legal team is going to continue fighting 
for a new trial citing evidence of alleged juror misconduct in his case. NBC's Natalie Morales sat down with Peterson's sister-in-law, who's been leading the charge to prove he's innocent. Natalie, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Well, for years, Scott Peterson has argued his trial was flawed, claiming one of the jurors lied about her history of domestic abuse to get on the case and to convict him. Well, today, Peterson is back in court, attending virtually, though, from prison. The judge is expected to set a date to hear the allegations of juror misconduct, and it found Peterson could get a new trial. Meanwhile, his sister-in-law, Janie, believes new evidence in the case will set him free. If he is given a new trial, do you think he'll be exonerated? Absolutely. I'm confident that Scott will never be convicted again. For nearly two decades, Janie Peterson has believed in her brother-in-law's innocence. Married to his older brother, Joe, Janie says she's known Scott since he was 13 and regularly talks to him in San Quentin State Prison, where he's been locked up for the past 16 years, found guilty of murdering his wife, Lacey, then eight months pregnant, and their unborn son, Connor. In 2003, their remains washed ashore just miles from where Peterson said he'd been fishing on Christmas Eve. Peterson's 2004 death sentence was reduced to life without parole last fall by the California Supreme Court, citing significant errors in jury selection. Now, Janie hopes evidence of alleged juror misconduct will win him a new trial and his freedom. There's evidence that was completely ignored that shows Lacey was alive after he left for the day. Much of the DA's case was based on Peterson's affair with massage therapist Amber Fry, who testified she had no idea he was married. How do you explain that he told Amber that his wife had died? There's nothing I can say to justify or explain that statement, but also there was no evidence that he, had, that he had anything to do with what happened to Lacey, so... You don't believe an adulterer makes motive for murder? I don't, I don't think you can take that leap. To exonerate Scott, Janie's created this war room, each sticky note representing a new witness and a new theory of what happened to Lacey. You'll definitely see some of these witnesses called to testify in Scott's second trial. Janie says one key to their case lies with the Peterson's golden retriever, Mackenzie. At trial, a neighbor testified seeing the dog inside the Peterson's gated yard at 10.15 that morning. But Janie says when the mailman arrived around 10.30, he claimed the dog wasn't there. Evidence never heard in court that she says proves Lacey was alive and out walking the dog after Scott left the house. So if Peterson didn't kill Lacey, who did? Janie says the morning she went missing, evidence shows the house across the street was being robbed and Lacey had a confrontation with the burglars, a theory that was part of Peterson's trial and appeal, but rejected by the court. The men denied any involvement in Lacey's case and a police investigation cleared them. But Peterson's defense team will argue they killed her, then decided to frame Scott. So your theory is Lacey was kidnapped by the men who were robbing the house across the street, and then they disposed of her body 90 miles away where Scott happened to be fishing. A lot of people would say, well, that seems a little far-fetched. If you have an opportunity to get away with murder, you're going you're gonna to do it. At age 53, Janie is now back in school, getting her law degree. So if Scott gets a new trial, she can be part of his defense. And all it takes is, if there is a new jury, changing one mind on mm -hmm. that jury. Absolutely. We don't have justice. This crime is not solved. So, Natalie, what does the prosecutor think of the possibility of a new trial? Well, you know, the issue of juror misconduct is a serious one. Now, the juror in question had actually two instances in her past involving domestic violence, both when she was pregnant, which she did not disclose during the voir dire. The prosecutor's office, though, is standing by the verdict, however, saying they will fight against an attempt to overturn Scott Peterson's conviction. However, if he is granted a new trial, the prosecutor will seek life without parole rather than the death penalty. This is definitely one to be watching, we'll guys. For sure. Natalie, thank you.
She stars in the Emmy-nominated Peacock original Girls 5, Eva, bringing sass and laughs as the self-absorbed member of a 90s group trying to make a comeback. But she also stole our hearts as Angelica Schuyler in Hamilton. Now five years after that role, and she's up for an Emmy for the filmed version of the Broadway hit. And Renee is with us to talk about all of it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so happy to be here on Tuesday. In person. So yes. To have you. In New York City. I know. It's all coming back. Yeah. So, coming back. I mean, here's the thing. We say five years since Hamilton. First of all, it's hard to believe because I just I watched it three times last week. There you I kicked go. it out yeah. with my, my son on Disney on. Plus. So you're nominated for an Emmy for the film version. If I'm not mistaken, that places you just one away from EGOT status. Two away. Two oh, away. Is it two away? I'm a good to. A good to. <laughs> I'm not an EGOT. You know, I, I can't believe I got the good to. The G and the T yeah. there you go. is a miracle. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with what I got. But I have this nomination, which is it's so amazing. So shockingly wonderful. It was so, so funny. I was, I was reading, you know, obviously so many powerful performances um, in, in this show. We're talking about, you know, Girls 5, Eva Hamilton. One here, it says, I read that if you could ever write your autobiography, the title would be called After Satisfied. That's right. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, in the moment, it meant uh, that the stress, I used to be so stressed when I was doing the show. Ah. Uh, I, I mean, I couldn't even relax and enjoy it because I was always, it's just a, such a beautiful, important number, technically, emotionally, you know, challenging. Right. And when it was over, I felt like I could just sit back behind Leslie Odom Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder about that. Stars. Like, you know when they have I a song it. that everybody's like looking forward to oh, hearing? Yes. And I when the audience knows the words the cast to it. cast recording, they knew every single word Yes. Of that. Yes. yes. So if I got it wrong, they okay. would have known. That's, so I get it. started there, Never and now it it's just about my life after Satisfied okay. and all the blessings that it brought, like the opportunity to be here with you today. Yes. So thrilled to have you here. I wanted to think my biggest thrills was I got to be a Skylar sister for a, for a I moment. I remember. That, you look just on like that, one out. On that turntable. <laughs> but, but, you know, you, you talk about Broadway. Uh, There's how, the footage. There yeah, we go. It's, it's, yes. It really is. <laughs> uh, that, how little rhythm I have. But, uh, Stealing the show is what you're doing. Uh, tell me about why is Broadway return so important for New York's company? Mm. Broadway is synonymous with what's brilliant about New York City. It's why we pay all these rent prices. <laughs> you know, and why, you know, I think we've done a really good job of making this be a shining city in our country and, and we attract really talented people. I mean, I, my career is, I'm specifically indebted mm. to what happens in New York City. The room, you know, being in the room where it happens, yes. kind of like, it means like being in New York City. People come here to change the world yeah. and, uh, and you get a little piece of that when you can come see really talented people on Broadway tell really important stories that are still relevant five years after they were on Broadway. Yeah. So it's really important and it really symbolizes that we are as human beings coming back from this pandemic. Oh, we are so resilient so. and we uh, and we we're, we're, we're ready to celebrate. Even these again. folks here, yeah, you know? I know. Oh, everybody's back. Yeah. Are fully vaccinated. I know crowd. they proudly get their vaccinations. They want to come to the crowd. They want to be here and be a like, part of touch New York shoulders City. again. Absolutely. Uh, we have to talk about Girls Five Eva. I mean it's picked up for a second season. The first season hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's yes. that's that hard to do. Shocking. Uh, before we talk about it, I want to take a look at this one scene where you're kind of tidying up as a house guest. Okay. Take a look. <laughs> this is the scene. Is that a trash pile? Of course not. It's to donate. I'm very giving. That's our microwave. It has a button that says baked potato. Invest in yourself. I do. I wash my bra every other week. A clean, fresh space is my gift to you for letting me stay here. I have an eye for this. Every interior designer I've ever worked with has said, then why don't you just do it? <laughs> I think All the scenes in that show is the least glamorous moment. I know, because you do get but glamorous. But comedy is there. We love seeing you like that. We love seeing the silliness, the humor. I mean, is it fun to kind of transition and play that kind of role? And how well, do you get into it? First of all, I get to work with Sarah Bareilles, who was here I recently, yep, I hear. Yep. Paula Pell, Busy Phillips, that wonderful Tina Fey show, Meredith Scardina writing. It's uh, That's a dream come true. And... You know, the comedy part is something that's just very much who I am. My friends are like, finally the world gets to see how ridiculous you are. <laughs> um, I, I feel like theater people, we, 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 we are really at home anywhere. Yeah. We're just always surprised somebody has a camera in our face. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so I love being on the show. It, it's doing really, really well on Peacock, and I'm so glad you that's guys so like great. it. so great. Were you really in a girl group back in the day? Oh my God, yes, girl. I was in everything there was to be in. <laughs> you know, what was your girl group called? What was it called? I think it was called, first of all, we did not get a record deal okay. on the inside heaven, but I think it was called 
female. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at this. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my girl. Please, y'all had a real situation going. We That's not so like. How did we not get signed? Wait, There's still time. Look, look at us. There's you know, still time? That obviously not professional pictures. That was on my balcony. The crop top together. and everything. I love it. But sure, it. no jokes here. You do have an album coming out next year. I have an album coming out. I'm so, very excited about it. Next, Original music. Will you come back? You come back. We want to talk about that. I, I would love to sing something. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mini concert. Here we come. <laughs> uh, by the way, season one of Girls 5 Ever streaming now on Peacock, which of course is part of our parent company, NBC Universal. It is? Apparently. Oh, have you That's heard what that? They you, that? you work for the Peacock. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. So when it comes to our health, everybody's journey is different. Take a look at the story of Meg Boss. As a young girl, Meg started weighing herself every day, and for years she believed because of her size, she'd never fit in. And then she lost the extra weight she carried around and thought that would be her ticket to happiness. But... It didn't even come close, and Meg's life quickly became a roller coaster ride of binging, dieting, and exercising. But when Meg and her husband Bobby became parents for the first time to their daughter Macy, something inside clicked, and she began a new fitness journey that made her physically and mentally stronger. We had a chance to sit down with Meg, who wrote all about it in her story, Fitness for Everybody. Take a look. Hey, Meg. Hi, Meg. Hi. How are I'm you? Here. I'm great. We're so happy you're here. So take us back to being that little girl mm -hmm. and, you know, having kids say things to you and, and really just society mm -hmm. saying that you weren't enough and how you fought against all that. Yeah, you know, it was something that I struggled with my entire life. Everything that I did revolved around my body and how that was restricting me and how I needed to change it. And mm -hmm. so my whole life, I just did everything possible to conform and to change and to adapt to what everybody else wanted. And then eventually I grew up and I was a mom and I was, you know, not doing what I loved. And what I loved to do was move my body and embrace fitness. Mm -hmm. And that just wasn't available for me. And I thought about my daughter and I thought about how, you know, one day she's going to grow up, she's a woman and she's going to eventually want to dream big and do things that she loves. And if all she can think about is her body and all she sees is me showing her that restriction and punishment and shame mm. and guilt are how you get those things, I don't want that for her. And so I just, I had to change everything about what I was doing and what I loved. And I just embraced fitness 100% after I had her, and I just haven't turned back since, and it's just completely changed my life. I love that uh, transformation, and I think a lot of people can feel your journey before that moment, that epiphany happened. And you were even talking about at one point you wanted to have a baby, you and your husband, and, th and here comes lovely Macy. But <laughs> the doctor told you initially, like, well, you'd have to lose 100 pounds before you could have a baby. And it seemed like everywhere you turned, there was someone telling you, this isn't going to work, you can't do this. And you did lose that weight, but the happiness was not... Sometimes people think with weight loss comes instant happiness, but that's not really how it works. No, it wasn't at all. I was 100% just focused on weight loss. That's all I could think about every day. Everything I put into my mouth, I had to know the exact amount of calories. And every, I mean, I was just engulfed in this lifestyle. And I thought that was healthy. I thought I was choosing health every single day. And in reality, it was very unhealthy. Everything I was doing, my mental health was just declining really, really quickly. And I was getting praised for it. I was getting so much celebration and praise around mm -hmm. me, telling me that, good job, keep going, don't stop. And for me, I felt like if I keep going, my life could end. And that's when that decision had to be made where I can't do this anymore. I have to choose life. I have to choose me. If that means that I'm not restricting and I'm not counting calories and I'm actually intuitively eating and nourishing my body in ways that feel good and moving my body in ways that feel good, then I'm doing it right. And that's what I want to teach my daughter. If yeah, she's going to learn anything about diet culture and about you know, all these things that society teaches young girls, she's not going to learn that from me. Mm -hmm. And that that was what changed my whole mindset. Mm -hmm. Meg, I think that's so smart. And your book is filled with wisdom on how we can all feel mm -hmm. good, which I think is the end result that we all want. Your blog and your social media posts have resonated with so many people. I think you have over 400,000 Instagram yeah. followers. You have just changed lives. So we have a little surprise for you. Joining us today are some of your biggest fans. It's our Meg Boggs fan, Zoom Wall. <laughs> hey, guys. You are loved.
<laughs> and actually, oh God, I'm sure that's crazy. where is Ashley? <laughs> Ashley wants to say a little something to you, Meg. Hi. Oh my God, Hi. I'm going to try not to cry right now. So I'm 35 almost, and I feel like I spent my entire life trying to be smaller in order to be worthy, in order to not take up space, in order to be healthy or fit. And um, a few years ago, Meg, you, I stumbled upon you on Instagram and um, you were doing, you were showing up just as you are for yourself, doing health and fitness, all these things in a larger body that I never knew that I could do. To say that you've had an impact on my life and my daughter's lives and the world is like such an understatement. So thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> we, have a, we also have a quick special message for you. Where's Bobby? This is your husband, Bobby, with Macy, your daughter, and your mom, Gloria. Bobby, what did you want to say? Oh, Very we love you so much. We're so I proud love of you. Mom so much. <laughs> <laughs> so proud of you. Thank you. Be a part of that and help you um, help you grow and just share the message. We we love you so much and we're so proud. Thank well, you so much, Bobby, uh, Macy, your mama. Man, love is all around. Meg, we want to say thank you. God, but just by being you, look what you did. We thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, what an inspiration. Mm -hmm. And for more on Meg's book, Fitness for Everybody, head to j.com slash shop. We hope you're back with us for another great morning tomorrow on Today. Molly Shannon's going to be here, by the way, to talk about her latest project tomorrow. So see you tomorrow. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.